second day of my Easter break. So I'm out in Big Shed working on the car again. I wanted to make a new starting handle, mainly so that I can return the one that my friend Michael has lent me for quite some considerable time now. I really need to get that back to him. So I've measured all of this up and I've drawn something up, uh, but I don't have any solid steel bar to make the the handle part out of. I do have some tube though. So I pulled out my little tube bending contraption and I bent this up. Uh, this is too long but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in the middle and shorten it. I'll join it inside there to get this a bit shorter because otherwise it's too long and you end up hitting your knuckles on the front dumb irons. And then I can make the rest of it. I've got some brass tubing that'll make the rotating handle. Um, the way this is held on is quite neat, it's sort of crimped in. I don't think I'll be able to do that with this because it's tube and I can't machine a little groove in it because it'll be too weak. So I'll come up with another mounting method. I'll probably um, put a uh, solder in a little brass end piece onto the brass sleeve and I'll weld in a little um, threaded bung on the end of the tube so that I can have a screw inside there to hold the, the rotating handle on and then making up the dog on the end, that's pretty easy, that's just fairly simple machining and milling uh, to make the little actual starter dog piece. This was my in initial one, this wasn't as a starter handle, this was just as a be able to turn the engine over handle. So it doesn't have the, the slotted dog on there which would kick the handle out when the engine fires. Um, so I can machine up something similar like that and it just needs the grooves machined in it. But while I had the tube bender out, the way this works is you have these little formers for getting different radiuses for the tube so it doesn't crush. And then I realized, well, I can use that to bend flat strap. So I've got it set up for doing that. And what I'm actually bending here is the straps to make the rear rebound hoops. So bend these up, I'll then measure them and figure out where the 90 degree bends at the bottom need to go and I'll do that with oxyacetylene so I can get nice tight bends in there and then there'll just be a bolt through. These go over the rear axle, so it's a bit hard to see with the body in place but they bolt down onto the chassis and that's what stops the axle going too far up. What I need to do is get some thick rubber uh, maybe half inch thick rubber strip and you drill a couple of holes either side and you mount that strip in there to act as a buffer um, like a you know rebound buffer just so you don't get the steel axle hitting the steel hoop uh, I suspect if you ever get to the point where your axle is hitting this you're probably in some pretty extreme situation um, I doubt it would be likely to happen with both sides going up and hitting like that that's a lot of travel it's more likely to happen if you're on an uneven surface and the axle does that so one side comes up and one goes down then you might actually hit these uh, but the bending the strap it works pretty well uh, it's this bender is pretty simple it's just these these sort of formers and you've got the moving handle here with a little wheel in it and all sorts of mounting holes and the handle only goes to this, ang this angle in regards to the machine so I can only bend it round to here but then you can sort of rejig the machine and you know I find I can do things I can put the loop in going this way and put a bolt through so that it's got something to press against uh, and that lets me bend flat bar like this as well so it works really well this happens to be more or less the right radius which is handy so I'm going to keep working on these and then the plan for the rest of the weekend probably is start making the doors. So as you can see that's as far round as I can bend that. You do also get a little bit of spring back of course in the steel so your radius ends up a little bit bigger than what this is. Uh, this is four inch I think um, about uh, 1100 millimeters, something like that. Where's my tape measure? Let's see, um, 100 millimeters. So 
what I need to do now is unclamp this, move all of this around, and then I can bend it the rest of the way. So this just sort of shows how by rejigging the machine, um, you don't need much to stop this stuff moving around. I can now bend it the rest of the way and get a full 180 out of it. So what I thought would be a quick and simple project ended up taking most of the day um, because it didn't exactly go wrong but I forgot to consider a couple of things and the main one was I was so busy making sure I got the the two hoops even and the same I forgot to take into account the fact that the chassis rail isn't flat there so I ended up having to um, modify things a little bit to get the hoops to sit correctly vertically to the ground if that makes sense otherwise they were sort of sitting on an angle and uh, I don't think there was any danger of the axle hitting them but it just looked funny it didn't look right um, so what I ended up doing was making a little block to go under one of the feet and that's all welded in place and then I tied it all up and the other foot is actually bent a little bit so it's not at a 90 degree angle it's a little bit more than that to account for the chassis rail kinking up at the back so those are good they're in place now um, the little holes here so that i can fit the rubber strap that goes inside there to actually work as a, as a rebound buffer uh, so there's just a couple of holes so i can put some bolts through uh, the good thing when making something like this where there's two of them uh, they're interchangeable which is good it means i've got them both the same and the holes are all in the same place because you can you can swap the sides if you need to not that you need to but uh, it just means that they're they're accurate so that should give me enough travel on the suspension uh, the only other problem is it showed up another little thing i didn't consider which is the back of the wooden frame just hits the back of those brackets. So what I've had to do there is I did have a, an extra screw hole there. I've moved where the, the screws go through and I can just radius that corner. Um, that epoxy is just there to fill up the previous screw hole. I'll mix up a bit more. It'll all sand off smooth and be nice. Um, this is also going to have a bracket, steel bracket on the inside. So I'm not worried too much about the strength here. Um, that should all be strong enough and then I can just either chamfer off this corner or put a little step in it or, or something it, it it's only needs about a quarter of an inch to clear that bracket and the nut so that like I say ended up taking most of the day it ended up very messy um, doing things on the the mill and cutting up steel and bits and pieces what I will do now is I will paint those black because those are those are now finished and then they can be permanently bolted onto the car. I'm using 3 8 BSF bolts which are probably overkill. I mean they're, they're pretty chunky sort of bolts but you know if, if you ever do get in a situation where the axle is coming up and hitting this you, you don't want them going anywhere. So they should be fine. Um, effectively once those are um, bolted down tight they they're, they're not part of the chassis because obviously if they were permanent you couldn't get the axle in and out you have to you have to be able to take those off to get the axle off obviously so that's the other other reason for using good solid bolts that are easy to get undone uh, so yeah I'll give those a coat of paint uh, I didn't get to my timber work at all today but it's getting a bit later in the afternoon and I think we're going to take the dogs for a walk to the beach Uh, today I have finished the axle rebound straps and I've got those bolted on. Gave them a coat of paint and baked the paint on. And I put in a little piece of rubber strip in there. Um, I've actually doubled it up. There's a second piece in along there as well just to give it a little bit more padding right on the top. Um, I don't think that'll go anywhere. They're nice and strong. All bolted down nicely. I'm just... Uh, tweaking the body so I cut out a little notch at the bottom there where that'll sit in and I'm also putting in little curved corners here 
just to match this so that when the aluminium comes down it's not a square corner it's a nice round corner it's just a, a small detail I think but it's good to get those sort of things right now that's the end of the day again it's meant to rain today but it hasn't started yet it was actually really nice and hot and sunny for most of the day uh, so I've been making the most of it and doing some bits and pieces outdoors grinding and things like that I don't like doing them inside here because the metal dust gets everywhere but I've made most of the brackets for the the rear half of the chassis and what I ended up doing was trying to figure out how I can make everything multi-purpose so these brackets here for example um, the bolt that holds the frame or, or the body to the chassis goes through these mounting plates and I'm going to drill holes through here and I'll put quarter inch bolts through there to bracket these two together and the front will just have a couple of screws that go into the back of this same on the other side uh, similar on the back so I made these pieces um, I actually made the back pieces first and I wasn't confident about bending the angles because everything on this is bent at a, a strange angle. Nothing's at right, right angles. So I actually did the back ones in two pieces. I bent that piece and then I bent that piece and I welded them together in the middle. Um, once it's all painted you won't really notice that. I extended the woodwork just here, just a little bit, um, just to round that off so that when I do the body it's not just a square corner. Uh, I'll be able to hammer that round nicely. It's sitting right on the chassis at the moment. Remember, this will be sitting up on little rubber spaces. Uh, this was the only place I thought it might be weak. And I can't bolt this through because of the curve here. So this will bolt all the way through here. And then there'll be two wood screws that go into that. Just to make all of that nice and solid. Uh... Oh, it, took, it took way less to explain those than it took to make them. That basically took all day. That's an awful lot of bending and grinding and welding and working out angles and things. Uh, to bend the steel, this is just 3mm steel. Um, it is galvanized. I had to get the galvanizing off where I welded it. I do have a like a sheet metal folding break. Uh, it's quite... Whoops, it's quite short, it's only about 600mm long, and it's only really for, for sheet metal. So for doing things that are a little bit bigger, like these brackets, I use my vice bending brake. And these work really well. For making little brackets like this, you just sort of clamp it in and it sort of presses it and puts in a nice tight bend. So that worked really well. These are the wood screws that I'll use. And the idea is they'll become part of the frame. So those steel pieces won't come off the frame once the frame's finished. Um, so I will, because, because I've been welding and metalworking, my hands are filthy. So the chassis is filthy, or the frame is filthy. I need to sand it all back nicely. And then I'm going to treat it. I've got some special anti-rot, anti-fungal type treatment. I'm going to paint it with that, and then I'm probably going to stain the whole thing black. Um, just because that's the look I sort of want to go for. I think it looks very neat and tidy. Uh, I didn't make these brackets too pretty. It, it's, it's a Riley. So from what I can see of the originals, they were pretty crude. Um, especially some of the brackets that hold the, the guards on. There's actually a piece that goes in here with a sort of lug in the middle. With, with a lock nut, so a tube goes in there, and that's the tube that holds the um, the mud guards in place. And those are incredibly crude. It is just literally a piece of strap with a sort of pipe really badly welded to the middle. So it's not like a Bugatti where, you know, things like this would probably be cast aluminium and then the engine turned to death. Uh, it's just metal strap and bits of bracket. Uh, there's actually a channel I've been watching quite a lot of recently um, the name is Engels Coach Shop, Engels Coach Works. He's a proper coach builder, as in stage coaches. Um, and so he does a lot of timber work, and he calls things like this the irons, uh, the metal that the blacksmiths would have done. And I'm pretty sure Riley 
quality was very similar. So I've left them pretty crude. I didn't go mad rounding off the corners or anything like that. I don't think Riley did. I think they just made it as simple as possible. So you can see this, this will screw down, countersunk screws, bolt through into there to strengthen all of that. This bolts through here to strengthen all of this. And then these will stay with the frame. Um, but the bolts that hold the frame to the chassis will be able to go through there. And it helps spread the load out. Um, and also, I think I mentioned before, these bolts here will probably do double duty as I can put the, um, the fuel tank mount will go in here. So there'll be some sort of bracket. The fuel tank is circular, so there may be a, a sort of thing that comes up, like a cradle with a semicircle that the tank sits on and then that sort of gets strapped down around that. It'll be something like that. Um, this is the strap I'm using. It's just just uh, easily obtainable from the local local um, hardware type place. So it actually makes a good fair curve indicator. So you can see it laying across the frame quite nicely there. Uh, it's actually not right there because that's actually higher. It should be sitting up a little bit. The, this point is slightly lower than that point. Uh, I think that's it. Like I say, it was, it was all day I spent doing this. Didn't take long to explain it. So what I'm going to do now is have a beer, probably. Uh, and I'm going to take those off, clean them up, or degrease them rather, and then I'm going to paint them black. Um, and I'm sort of waiting to, I need to do a big order of all the hardware I need. So the bolts to hold the, the frame down, um, you know, the, the quarter inch bolts that'll hold all of this together. I do still need to make another piece of bracketry, which is a piece that's sort of, it's a flat piece that goes up there, round, down, and along there. So that'll be easy to make. That's just a bunch of welding of flat bits together, really. Um, so I need to make those and fit those in place as well. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Forgot to mention the other small improvement I made. I just trimmed down these rear pieces where they were sort of double thickness. They don't need to be that thick. So I just sort of trim them down, which makes it look a lot nicer, less chunky. Not that anyone sees that when the skin's on, of course. Um, out of interest, I weighed the pieces of timber that I cut out, the two little sections, which are up here somewhere. Those two pieces there, that's 600 grams worth. So, not a lot. And uh, these are the brackets, just with the, the first couple of coats of paint on them. I'll probably leave those to dry overnight, and then tomorrow morning I'll come out and I'll turn them over and paint the other side give them another couple of coats so I'm not sure how long this film is getting now I might uh, I might actually finish it the the rest that I need to do is kind of similar so still not quite onto the doors but I think it'll be good to make sure that the chassis is completely or the frame rather is completely um, finished with the brackets and all the different bits and pieces uh, so that it's bolted down and it's in the absolutely correct place before I make the doors. One other thing I need to make, uh, uh, there are some little tabs, I believe, that sort of go on here. I've seen a couple of cars with those where there's, there's two little rectangular tabs, uh, which are what stops the door going all the way in. So they just get screwed on there. Uh, chassis still needs the, the little diagonals so I can fit in the battery tray. But I think, I think that's almost everything. Um, I didn't get to work on the starting handle. I'll have another go at that maybe tomorrow. Um, one thing I should say is when you're welding, it, it, it's good to make sure you're wearing the right trousers. So as I was welding, I um, there was a, a sort of pop and an explosion and the weld pool exploded because I mustn't have got all of the zinc out of the place I was welding. And so a, a red hot piece of the, um, the welding paddle kind of went on my trousers and 
yeah, that was exciting for a few minutes. But uh, overall, a good day's work, I think. It's the last day of my holiday. Uh, the bad weather still hasn't showed up, but it is starting to look a bit, a bit grey and grim out there. It hasn't started raining yet today, so I've made full use of that, and I've been outside because I've been grinding and sanding things. I've been making up the brackets that go around the rear axle openings, and these are just simple strap welded together. I was much more careful with my welding this time, and I was able to do nice strong fusion welds with no filler. Um, I just TIG welded things and these will just be screwed to the frame so I just drilled and countersunk the holes. Um, when you're making these things of course they're handed so I had sharpie marker all over them saying which was the near side, which was the off side, which side is the side to drill the countersinks in because when you're making things like this it's really easy to get them confused and end up drilling the countersinks on the wrong side. Um, so you end up with two pieces the same when they're actually meant to be mirror images. So you just have to be careful. The You can sort of see how that's going to fit in the car there. I've just got it clamped in place. That'll just go around there. Um, I drilled, made sure all the screw holes are in the correct places so no screw holes collide or hit the frame to the chassis mounting bolts or anything like that and that'll just strengthen all of that up quite nicely I think and jobs like that they look quick but I've spent most of the day working on that probably four or five hours did do a little bit of stuff in the garden earlier and my other brackets have all been painted so they they're all ready to to fit back onto the car. I can't fit these longer ones into my my little toaster oven unfortunately to bake the paint on which is why I've got them sitting next to the garage door because it gets nice and warm and if I leave these for a week or so the paint should be nice and nice and hard and cured and then the plan will be eventually they'll they'll all be screwed in place but I want to wait until after I've treated the the chassis and um, given it a sort of black stain as well, I think. I still need to work out the brackets that hold the guards on. I think I mentioned the other day, there's sort of a strap that goes up there, across and down with a mount. Uh, there's another mount somewhere here behind the seat, I think sort of around here. And I believe there's another one at the tail somewhere down here. And that's where the supports that hold the guards on attach. Um, need to figure out where they go at the front, can't remember, and I think that should look nice. Uh, that is all patterned on original Brooklyn's. Um, I've been going through my collection of photographs. Every time I see one for sale or there's one mentioned somewhere, I, I borrow a copy of all the photographs and I've got those all in a private album and I'm always using that as reference material. Um, but the, the cars all vary so much, it, it's hard to see details that are exactly the same on any two cars. Um, so one thing, for example, is those, those little metal tabs that fit on the inside. They're to stop the, the doors going too far in, I guess. The door does have a, a lip on it. So at the, at the back, you can see, if I get the light right, this edge and the bottom edge are actually folded over. So there's a metal strip that goes on the wooden frame and this folds around that. So the timber comes up to that lip. So that lip does push up against the, will push up against the skin. So that lip would rub here, but they still seem to have these tabs on the other side. So maybe there's a detail there I'm not quite understanding, but I've seen those tabs now on two different cars, two different original cars, including um, 8079, which is very original. So I'll have a look at those when I finally get to, to doing the doors, but I think that's probably a good amount of work. Like I say, these things look simple, but you know, I, easily that's half a day spent just doing those. I still have to paint them, so I need to clean them up, paint them. 
um, and then then those are done. I think that's probably it for the weekend now.